Within this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about creating a sky sphere inside of the Unreal Engine and then being able to export it here into UEFN so that you can actually create any kind of custom sky sphere that you want for your specific world. And if you're enjoying this content, please consider supporting us over at our Clever Like School, where you'll become a much more powerful UEFN creator through many more tutorials. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description. To begin this process, we're going to go ahead and start here inside of the Unreal Engine. Now, this is literally just a landscape that I've just kind of added some stuff to to make it nice and pretty. Everything that you see here on screen does actually come from Quixel Bridge, but of course you can use your own assets any way you need to to customize your specific needs. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the lighting. Now, if I hold down Control and L on the keyboard and just move my mouse, you can see that I can actually change the lighting, which is great because now I can go ahead and customize that. The other thing that's really important to understand is if we come up here into Windows, we can come down here to this Environment Light Mixer, and this will allow you to change just about everything you ever need to worry about in a real world scenario when it comes to lighting for the real world. Now let's go ahead and talk about a few considerations that you need to worry about. One, you wanna make sure that your horizon line is pretty varied. You don't want it to be like super bland, which is gonna make it really, really boring inside of your world when you get to UEFN. Now another thing you may wanna consider is not actually adding any specific landmarks in this because this is just gonna be in the background and it's meant to just kind of fill in the space that's way beyond where the player is going to be playing. To capture this scene and put it inside a UEFN, we're gonna go ahead and come up here to our place actors, and I want you to go ahead and type in the word cube, and what we're looking for is this right here, this scene capture cube. So we'll go ahead and just click this, and it's gonna go ahead and put it inside of the world. Now I've got my viewport camera exactly where I want my scene capture cube camera to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and say snap object to view, like so. Now if I back up a little bit, you can say, hey, now it's right where I want it to be. Our next step is to go ahead and create the asset that we're going to use to export the texture to UEFN. So to do that, let's go ahead and open up the content drawer. I'm going to right click and again, I'm going to type in the word cube. And the one we're looking for this time is this cube render target. Go ahead and give this a name, then simply double click on it to open it up. And what we're going to be looking for in here is this size X. Now, because we're working inside UEFN, the max texture size we can use is 2048 squared. So let's go ahead and just set this value to 2048. Now, this bright green is not what we want. What we want to do is go ahead and take this specific asset and connect it to that camera. So go ahead and save these changes that we've added to it. We'll go ahead and close this down. And with the camera selected, you'll see that we have a little section down here that says texture target. This is where we're gonna actually add in that asset. So we can click on this little drop down right here, and we can go ahead and choose this my cube render target, which is the one that we just created. Now, if we open this back up, I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on this, and you can see that, hey, now it's actually capturing this in real time. And yeah, it's gonna be a little jumpy because of all the shadows that are moving around. And this may destroy some frame rate. Mine's down to like about eight, so just be aware of that. But now we know that it's working, we can go ahead and close it. All right, now let's go ahead and export this out. So let's go ahead and open up this and we're gonna right click on this asset that we created. We're gonna come over here to asset actions and we're gonna go ahead and choose export. Inside of our export, we're gonna see that, hey, this is sending out as an HDR, which is exactly what we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this on my desktop for now and we'll import it into UEFN next. So to import this, we're just gonna go ahead and right click, come up to import, go ahead and choose that file, which we can see is right here. Go ahead and open that. And when it brings in, it should bring it in as a texture cube. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Our next step is to go ahead and build a sphere that we're gonna be able to put this render cube on. So let's go up here to our selection mode in the top left, go ahead and choose modeling. And under our create section, we're gonna go ahead and just create a sphere. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click once. Uh, you will notice that this is huge and that is just because I have the radius set at 1000. And go ahead and choose accept. Now, just as a good practice, what I'm gonna do is reverse the normals that are on this. So with the sphere selected, let's go up here into our attributes over here on the left, and we're gonna choose normals. And then in here, we wanna make sure that our invert normals is toggled on, and then go ahead and just choose accept. Cool, so now it's inside out. Perfect, exactly what I want. Now, let's go ahead and build the material. So go ahead and open up the content drawer and right click, choose material. We'll just call this one M Sky Sphere, and then go ahead and open it up by double clicking on it. And let's go ahead and dock this up at the top. And this first node that we see right here, we need to change a few things on it. The first thing we're gonna do is change the shading model from default lit to unlit. So we'll go ahead and click here and choose the first option, which is unlit. Next in the search bar, go ahead and type in the word sky. And we're gonna go ahead and toggle this checkbox right here that says is a sky. And then we'll go ahead and save that. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and knead that texture. So let's go ahead and just click and drag this in here. And we're gonna connect this RGB pin to the emissive right here. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more room. Next thing we're gonna need is a reflection vector. So I'll just right click and type in reflection vector. And the one we're looking for is this reflectant vector WS, like so. We're gonna go ahead and connect this into the UVs. And so that we can control this reflection, let's go ahead and add in a three constant. So I'm gonna hold the three key on the keyboard and the left mouse click. And we'll go ahead and take this white pin, which is RGB connected or XYZ in this case, and connect that right there. Let me go ahead and save this and close it down. Now we can go ahead and connect that material to the actual sphere. So with the sphere selected, we'll come down here where it says element zero. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little drop down, and we're gonna go ahead and look for that material. So M underscore size sphere. I'll go ahead and choose that. And there we go. So now we can see this. Now this sphere is tiny, so let's go ahead and change its scale. And I'm just gonna go ahead and plug the scale up to about 50 times with the scale actually locked. So all three of them go. There we go. Sweet. Now You'll notice that we can actually still see the cloud. So let's start talking about some of the things that we can do here inside of UEFN to get this sky sphere to match the environment that we are going to be working with. So specifically, let's go ahead and talk about those clouds. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is added in a day sequence device. So one of these, and it is underneath the ground. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So it's way down here, it's just kind of hiding. And some of the things that I've actually changed on here are gonna help us fix some of the issues. So first and foremost, uh, if we go ahead and turn the fog off, so I can click that, and inside of here, I've actually disabled the fog right here because we don't want to see that fog. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to make it a little bit clearer from where we are standing to the background. And you may or may not want this depending on your specific needs. The other aspect that I've changed inside of here are the clouds. And I've gone ahead and just clicked this little button right here, and that just turns off the clouds. So now we can see that sky sphere much, much cleaner. Another aspect of the scene that I've altered is the time of day. Now up here in the top left hand corner of the viewport, this will affect the time of day in editor only. This will not affect it in the game. So what we can do is to go ahead and click up here and then go ahead and choose a time of day. And this is in military time, so 24 hours. So this is 1900. And what that means is that once we have got this figured out here inside of the editor, we need to transfer that information over to the game, which is actually really easy to do. So if we go over here and we grab the island settings from right here, we can actually see that inside of here, we do have a time of day, and I've gone ahead and set that to 10 p.m., which is actually 2200, but it ended up being close enough. And with that, now the game will actually behave and have the same kind of lighting setup that we have here at the same time of day. Now, you may have noticed that the ground seems a little strange as we're kind of moving around, so let's go ahead and fix that as well. With this actual sky sphere selected, so you can see that I do have that sphere selected, I'm gonna go into my selection mode, I'm gonna change this to modeling, and then inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our X form. Now, inside of X form, we're gonna go to our edit pivot. What we're gonna do is simply just click this center button right here, like that, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose accept. So now that we have the pivot centered on the sky sphere, we're gonna go ahead and reset its location. And all you gotta do is click on this little button right here, and then boom, it's all fixed. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and create your own custom worlds inside of the Unreal Engine, and then export that data out as a render target that you can use on a sky sphere here inside of UEFN. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go ahead and just leave a comment down below. We'll get back to you when we can. And of course, don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.